So how can I help you? Yeah. Well, I believe my 10-year-old son has developed narcissistic traits as a result of my lack of boundaries. How do I undo the damage that I've done up to this point? Um, because the constant manipulation is really exhausting. And now that I'm aware of my lack of boundaries, I Great. just, I need help navigating this. Oh, you're so awesome. I wish everybody would ask questions like that. Did you hear what she just did? <laughs> hey, 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 Danielle, can I give you a trophy here on the air right in front of everybody? I got to tell you, this is awesome. <laughs> See, what she said was, she's got this person that's a problem in her life, right? You know, little Joey is, 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 uh, let's just call it selfish. Okay. Is that a good word? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's forget the narcissistic thing for a second. He's just selfish. Okay. Joey wants what yeah. Joey wants and Joey wants to get what he wants and he'll do anything to get what he wants. Am I right so far? Yes. Okay. So Danielle said, I can see how. I have related to him in a way that is, has allowed this to develop. What can I do differently to solve the problem? So Danielle is going to fix this problem. I have confidence in you that you're going to fix this problem because you see you're looking to the only person that you can control because you can't control Joey. The only person you can control is you. So what you're saying is I am going to start to behave differently with him with the hope, and I would say that is a very, very, very good hope. I mean, the kid's 10 years old, right? You got a lot of leverage here, a lot of leverage with a 10 year old. Try with a 40 year old narcissist, a yeah. little more difficult, but he's 10. So I got a lot of hope for this. Okay, so tell me an example of the selfishness that you would like to address. Ooh. Well, you know, he's an only child and he's the only grandchild. So I'm doing the best I can. Um, the selfishness is affecting the peace in our home, his friendships outside of the home, and the kids in the mm. neighborhood, kids at school. Mm. People are starting to avoid him. Um, oh. And that breaks my what heart. What does he do? So what does he do? He tries to manipulate by being moody. Um, with me, he tries, he uses tears with his friends. Um, he gets easily offended or he chooses to be offended so that he has a reason not to deal with them when they tell him no. Um, he tries okay, so get, to make them feel give, like he doesn't like them. Give me an them. example. <laughs> get, give me an example. What does he do with, with me? you? Give me, let's stick to you. Yeah. Just this morning, so it's it's constant. Got up, I set a boundary. I said I need a minute in the morning to get ready, and when I'm ready, I'll come out. He he broke that boundary, and I reminded him I need it. I just need a minute. What, I'll be right out. What did he What did he do? He how, how I did come he out to boundary? find that he's pouting, pouting, and we usually do devotions together. He's already started and finished them without me as a punishment. And then he starts crying, saying that I don't spend enough time with him. You know, here comes the guilt trip. He's the victim. And I reminded him just last night, we had a great night together. You know, we horse played. We had a movie and popcorn night. We're going to have a fun time this weekend together. We're going to have a family day at the pumpkin patch. That's, and he said, oh, I don't want to go to that. He's crying. I just, can you just call the school and tell them that I'm going back to bed today? And I, I don't know if all this because he just didn't want to go to school or what. I'm like, I don't okay, know so how let, we get this. Hold on. I, 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 just stop. Stop for a second. Let's go back to the morning. Okay. Okay. You you tell him we're going to have time together at, let's pick a time. Let's call it 8 30. Okay. We're going to have time together. You know, I'm going to spend some time doing some other stuff to the end. I'll see you at 8 30. Okay. That's how we start. Okay. All right. And then. Right. He, you come out at eight thirty, and what has he done? What's he doing that you call breaks the boundary? He, he didn't break the boundary because he didn't come in, right? You you got your time. This morning he so, did. What? 
this morning he did break the boundary. By pouting? I don't see that as breaking a boundary. He, no, he, he, he came into my room before I was ready, like we agreed upon, and I've explained to him many times. He came okay, in stop, anyway, stop, and I stop, stop, him. stop, 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 We just hit the kernel. We hit the goal mine. Okay. You've explained to him many times. Did you hear me <clears throat> earlier talking about trying to get my dog to meow? Yes. How many, what's the magic number of explaining to Finley that I want her to meow that she's actually going to do it? How many times do I need to explain it to her? <laughs> oh. We just hit oh, the whole, I, I mean, this this will cure 80% of what you're probably, you know, dealing with this, I would think, I guess. Look, this is not rocket science, okay? Do you see my, are, are you watching or listening? Can you see the, are you on Facebook? Can, can you see the, the screen here? No, I'm listening. Okay. Well, I'm sitting in a room and there's some walls around me. All right, those are boundaries. All right. Now, that wall basically says, okay, if you if you walk into me, it's going to hurt. All right. Right. It doesn't keep reminding me of that. When I do it. It doesn't move and say, I told you, if you do that, it's going to hurt. No, it just stands there. There's no argument. So if I tell Joey, Joey, um, I'm going to have some time. I'm going to be doing some stuff. I will meet you in the kitchen at 830. And I don't want you coming into my room before then. And if you do that, then we'll have our time together. Okay. If you don't do that then we won't have our time together and you'll get to spend the time that we were going to have our time together sitting in the worst room in the house with no video games or no anything for the time we would have had together. What would you like to do? You get to make up your mind, but I'll, I'll see you. Okay. So then he okay. comes into the room. He violates the boundary. And then he loses the time he wanted with you. Plus, he gets to spend it in a room with no toys for that entire time. So when you say, I've told him a thousand times, you only have to tell him once and maybe warn him once. But after that, then he, he's going to learn you're serious. And he's also going to learn the basic problem of what we call selfishness, the world does not adapt to everything I want. I have to adapt to other people for life to go well. And so basically what you're, what you're referring to as narcissism here is, I, I don't know all the stuff, I haven't met him. He could have a lot of personality organization that might fit into that, but it doesn't matter what even narcissistic people have to learn is the world does not revolve around you. Okay. Immature people ask for life to meet their demands. Mature people meet the demands of life. So mom's got a demand here. The house has a demand here. The school has a demand here. It says that you're going to show up and no, we don't call the school and tell them you don't feel good. You're going to school in the conversation. And that's what's got to start happening, where you are, you are just meaning what you say and saying what you mean, and that's going to reduce his omnipotence. And then he's going to learn, you know, gosh, I'm not the king of the universe. So how does that sound? Right. That sounds really good. You know, it sounds so simple. And, it is. Um, so yeah. <laughs> give me to be good. so that's grateful for that get me to the hard part and and you know sometimes it helps to sit down with him and say you know i kind of um i think i've 
I think I've made some mistakes in sometimes not letting you know clearly kind of what I expect from you. Um, so I'm going to start telling you if I need something, I'm going to start, I'm going to start telling you a little more clearly because I really want you to hear me, you know, like when I say, don't come in my room, you know, until 830. So we're on the same page. So you really know what I'm expecting or we're getting up at a certain time or you got to have your room clean before you get to go play baseball or whatever. I just don't think I've, I've been clear enough. And so um, I'm just letting you know, I, I'll be more clear in the future. Okay, yeah, we, we've had a conversation like that recently. And I said, this is something, you know, we both need to work on, and we're going to do it together. And he was very receptive to that. Okay, but he's receptive, but he's not. He's not. Oh, I just had a little. This is a good thought. I need to write this down. <laughs> he's receptive but he's not getting a chance to receive it in real life. See, what you're saying is I'm going to have requirements of you, but then he doesn't get a chance to be receptive on Monday morning or Wednesday morning at 830 because it, the requirement doesn't really manifest in real life. So he's receptive to the words, but we have to yeah. teach him to be receptive to the reality. That's what's missing. Wow. <laughs> That's like when a yeah, husband, you're right. oh yeah, okay. I'll agree to be a good husband. Sure, I'll do that, honey. Well then, you know, 10 minutes later, when she asked him to do something, pouts, complains, whatever you just said. So we're gonna teach him the wall doesn't move and mom's the wall. Okay. Okay. And sometimes um, he doesn't realize, you know, <clears throat> that he's bringing on the tear, or maybe he does know exactly what he's doing. It doesn't seem, it seems like such a habit that he doesn't what he think does about what? it. Um, our dynamic, um, you know, bringing on the tears, manipulating. Why well, do so what you tell him? Can, when does it, when does he bring on the tears? When he isn't getting his way. Okay, give me an example, you know, not a description. Get, give me an example. When, when would he bring on the tears? You did what, and then he cried. What did you do? He knew that we had yard work to do. He wanted to go play with his friends instead. I told him, actually, you know, you knew that we had to do this, so let's get our gloves on. Let's go out in the backyard and do this together. And he created this well i'm i'm tired i've had a bad day i'm going to my room and he starts crying saying uh i'm i'm stupid i'm a bad kid or i have a bad life you're a mean um, mom just okay hey, hey joey and joey joey listen um that's not stuff i really want to talk about right now right now what's important is that you get your yard work done and so I want you to go in the backyard and I want you to finish your yard work. And after you're done, then if you want to talk about how you got a bad life, I'll be available in the kitchen over coffee. Okay, but right now you're going to go do your, your yard work. I'm not listening. You may not be through complaining, but I'm through listening. You got it? Earplugs. Mom's going to do what she's got to do. I'll see you at the complaining meeting. We take complaints at 1115. That's when the complaining door <laughs> opens and I'll see you there kiddo. But right now get your blankety blank in the backyard. You just got to stop giving into yeah. this crap. Stop yeah, it. it's, You're it's in charge. hard. Okay. I don't, you know, it's hard because I, I'm like, are these real tears or is he manipulating me? And I'm, I'm just, I'm slow are to catch on. Are you kidding on, me? So. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Do you, are you <laughs> serious? Do you see blood? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Did he break his arm? <laughs> are these real tears? No, are no. you kidding me? You know better than that. <laughs> well, Come I on. do now, but man, I told okay. him, I said, at the end of that interaction, I said, okay, I think you're trying to manipulate me right now. I'll be available to talk about these things later, but right now you need to get outside and help us. That's what I said. 
All right. Well, I wouldn't so even do okay that. And the last dog thing dog? I would ever say, the last thing I would ever say to a kid is you need to do something. Obviously, he doesn't need to do something. Uh, he feels no need for this. You need him to do it. What I would say is, Joey, you got a choice. You can go in the backyard or you can spend the rest of the day sitting at the picnic table outside on the bench with no video games and no anything for six hours or an hour or whatever appropriate timeout is, four years or something. You get to choose what you're going to do, okay? Now, at that point, if he feels like if I don't do my yard work, I'm losing a lot of privileges or whatever, then he has a thought, which is, oh, I need to do my yard work. So I'll get what I want and not have consequences. But for you to say you need to go do this, that's just more nagging. I mean, uh, I need to pay my taxes, right? So I don't go to jail. IRS doesn't, if they said to me, you need to pay your taxes. Well, if they're not going to throw me in jail, no, I don't. I don't need to do that. If there's no consequences, he has no need. Period. Yeah, I started, I did tell him that he was grounded if he didn't straighten up and go out there. So he did. There you go. But okay. if there's been too many years of no consequences, right? Um, so well, it doesn't just, matter. It's, it's extra hard. It, so he did it with a terrible, he did it with a terrible attitude, but he did it, you know. Well, I could, you know. Will this get better take, over time? You could, <laughs> absolutely. It, it will get better today. He went out and did it. That's better. Yeah. Okay. It's going to get better when it gets better, but it's not going to get better until there's a better requirement for it to get better. There's been no requirement. Why would it get better? So we don't have to have the same problem for 10 more years. It stops today. And he's not going to be happy about it, but then that's going to go away. Okay. I got to run, got to talk to some other people, but thank you for asking a great question that lots and lots and lots of parents can identify with. Um, you know, let me kind of give you um, one of those laws of the universe I was talking about here. Um, we are born as humans, self-centered, period. Have you ever, moms, come on, a bunch of you moms out there, you have babies, right? How many of your babies, when they came out of your body, how many of them um, in the first minute, right after they were born, turned to you and said, Hey, mom, is there anything I can do to help out around here? No, they didn't do that. What'd they do? It was all about them. That's great for an infant. Okay. And what do we do with an infant? We make it all about them. You don't frustrate infants. You meet their needs. They're screaming, they're crying, they're hurting, they're cold, they're wet, they're in abject horror, entire physiological distress. You pick them up, you comfort them, you give them the food, you give them the nurturance. And what happens? Their tummy begins to get full. And you do that for a while. And then there's a word called weaning, all right? Do you know what the word, the Hebrew word for wean means? One of my favorite verses. It's when David says, God, I'm like a weaned child at, you know, at your chest. You taught me to trust you at my mother's breast. Okay. You give to them. And once they've been given to, what happens? Then... There's this shift that starts to take place with the kid where now we're going to not just give to you whenever you want it, but now we're going to actually start to make some requirements of you because you came into the world thinking it's all about you. Now we're going to help you learn some of it is about you, but you've also got to adapt to the needs of others as well. And so basically the maturing process is exactly what I said earlier, that immature people want life to meet their demands. Mature people meet the demands of life. And you only learn to do that by parenting's 
having by parents having demands. If you don't have any expectation and you don't have any demand that the kid has to meet, they're going to grow up thinking the world's here for me. And then they're going to run off and marry some codependent and she's going to be calling me on this show saying my husband's narcissistic. Well, call his mother or his father or whoever allowed him to get away with this forever. So parenting is about giving and requiring. But frustration for children is a required vitamin. They need it. They need to hear the word no to build frustration tolerance. If they through crying and tears and manipulation can get everything they want, they're going to grow up with emotional dysregulation all over the place. And manipulation and omnipotent fears and narcissistic injury and a bunch of other problems. Go to boundaries.me. Check it out because there's a lot in there about how to set these kinds of limits. Really, really important for your child.